how to make $1,000 this month on today's episode. Today's episode is brought to you by SEO Pro Lab, the company that I trust to keep Serve No Master at the top of Google. To save 10%, use the coupon code Serve No Master at checkout. Go to servenomaster.com backslash SEO today. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. I recently sent out an email to all of my followers, everyone who listens to the show, everyone who follows the blog, everyone who's read any of my books, to find out what kind of the biggest fears or problems or challenges people were facing this year. And I heard back a very strong message that for a large portion of my audience, the number one problem is how to make an extra thousand dollars this month. If I can help you cross that first bridge, it'll give you the breathing room to accomplish everything else. I received email after email kind of approaching this problem from different angles. And it's a really the place where a lot of people are. So if this is your first time visiting Servant Master, if this is your first time visiting my website or hearing a podcast episode, this episode is really for you. I'm going to break down the exact steps you can take to hit that number this month. If you're willing to work two or three hours a day, Monday through Fridays, you can hit that extra thousand dollars this month. Now, here's the thing. Once you do this once, if you decide to do it again next month, it will take you less time. And eventually you get to the point where it takes you about an hour to 90 minutes a day and you can start raising the number as well. You'll start earning more and more money. I'm really excited to share this very simple plan with you. And this is very similar to the technique I use whenever I need to raise money. Whenever I need to fundraise for a new project, I take a ghostwriting project. And this is very, very similar. So I want to take you through the seven key steps to achieve success, to make $1,000 this month and be in a position to make $1,000 or more every month from here on out, depending upon how you want to move forward. I want to give you the exact blueprint and the exact tools. The very first point, number one, the first tool is your mindset. You have to change the way you think about work and the way you think about money. One of the people in my circle, a friend of a friend of a friend was talking about how he was really struggling. He just graduated from college. He was living back at home with his parents. He's like, I don't have any money. I need a way to make some money. And I'm going through job interviews, but he only interviewed for one job in six months because it was the only job that was good enough for him. And I said to him the exact same thing I'm saying to you, until your mindset is I'll do whatever it takes to make the money I need to make, you'll never make the money you need to make. As a new dad with two kids on the scene and a family that I have to support, if the war chest gets low, I'll take whatever job I have to do, do any type of project I need to do to fundraise, to support and take care of my family. That's my mindset. When things got tough, I took a lot more ghostwriting projects from people to fill in the gaps while I began building new sectors of my business. So whenever I need to grow a new area of my business, I'll take ghostwriting jobs. I'll take this type of work, contract work to fundraise. Now, the level I'm at now, I tend to take a whole project or I'll take a book job. But when you're starting out, it's much better to take a smaller project and to start with article writing. But before you do any of those things, you have to say right now, I want to make that money and I'll do whatever it takes. I'll spend the next 30 days doing it. I'm not even asking you to spend months learning a new system. I'm not asking you to invest eight hours a day. I'm just saying, if you're willing to spend two or three hours working, you'll make $100 each time. I want you to make $100 every single time you sit down at your computer. And this is exactly how to do it. Mindset is so important. And the reason I'm talking about it first is because many, many people who come to me and say, oh, I really want to make $1,000 this month. And I say, okay, here's how to do it. Then they go, oh no. And if you really needed that money, you would have a different mindset. People that are hungry and people that are starving are very, very different in how they approach food. People that are starving will eat anything. It's not about the taste anymore. Whenever you offer someone food, if you offer a person who's homeless food or 
someone who you think is starving, if they reject the first thing off, they go, oh, I don't want to eat that. It doesn't taste good. They're not really starving. Because when you're starving, you'll eat dirt off the ground. You'll eat whatever it takes. You'll eat grass. And that's the mindset of people who succeed. Go, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll take any job I have to do. I'll do any project I have to do. People that build really big, amazing businesses often work horrible jobs for two or three years to fundraise, to launch those businesses. And now we're at a time in life where you don't have to do that. You can raise enough money to start any type of business just in a couple of hours each afternoon. You don't even have to do weekends with this system. But if you don't accept this mindset right now, if your mindset right now is, I'm going to listen to what Jonathan has to say, and then I'll decide if I'm going to follow this plan, you're not hungry enough. You probably won't implement. You might as well turn this off because your lack of conviction almost ensures your failure. So it's all about that decision. People ask me why I'm so successful. And it starts off with this simple mindset. I'll do whatever it takes to make the money I need to make every month. I'm constantly taking extra projects, trying to diversify, opening into new areas looking at new ideas, all of these things I do are all about that core mindset that separates me from most of the people. I have the mindset of the starving. and That is how you can really accomplish that this month. You need that mindset of I'll do whatever it takes. Number two, I already have put together on my blog, and I'll put a link below this, a whole giant article explaining all the different article mills. An article mill is a place that hires thousands or tens of thousands of writers and sells articles to tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of customers. The advantage of an article mill is that they generate perpetual work for you. They always have work. They always have work available for writers. The bad part is that when you're at the bottom tier, you don't make very much money. And they take a huge cut. There are a couple of reasons an article mill is worth your time right now. The first reason is it gives you a chance to build up your portfolio and build up your experience level. When you're working for an article mill or, you know, they call themselves content mills, they give themselves fancier names, but it's what it really is. You get a chance to see what customers want. So they have a training process and they walk you through everything. You can see this is the template to use. And when you learn to write in this way, you can then deliver product that customers like, even if you're writing somewhere else. So it's a good place to get your first batch of experience. Now, if you have experience with writing in the past, if you have a degree, if you've graduated high school, college, or have a higher level degree, each of those different levels changes what they'll pay you. And I break all of that down in my content mill breakdown. So you can look at each different tier and join them and see what level will pay you at. If you're a native English speaker, immediately they knock you up a couple of tiers. Most of them have five levels. So non-native English speakers are like level one and someone who's like awesome is level five. And people at level five sometimes make two, three, four times more money for the same content. So look at each of these different levels and see where you can start. If you're absolutely brand new beginner, start at the bottom three, start at the lowest level three. Tier one, the really basic, simple, very common ones and find the one that you can join that will pay you the most. So you can join three. And one of them says, hey, we'll pay you seven cents a word. Another one says, hey, we'll pay you six cents a word. Another one says, hey, we'll pay you 11 cents a word. Guess which one you should write for? The one that will pay you 11 cents a word. This is not your new full-time job. You're not going to be writing mill writer for the rest of your life. Remember what I just said, do whatever it takes. You're only doing this as the first step on the path to your success. Now, I do know a writer through a friend of a friend who's been writing for a tier one writing mill for a long time and has written over 10,000 articles for them. Don't do that. Once you've written enough articles, we're going to move higher and higher levels. There's no reason to stay at a low level content tier writing if you can get to a higher level. There's tier two and tier three. There are better and better content mills that will pay you way more money per word. So you want to treat your writing as a business as we move forward. But for now, I want you to join three content mills, three writing mills that are the lowest level that fit you. So if you have a bit of experience and the bottom three are too low, maybe you go a couple higher than that, but you want to join three that will take you and give you work. So join the highest level that you can right out the gate, but you may need to start at the bottom and that's okay. You're not going to be there for more than a month, two tops. Step three, making $1,000 this month, is that you need to create 10 articles for your portfolio. This is where a lot of people get stuck. And I realized that I have to be more specific. Just telling people to write out 10 articles. I get an email all the time. Hey, Jonathan, what are the 10 topics I should write on? And I realized, you know what? I should just tell you. 
So I spent some time on this, thinking about areas where there's the most work, where it's the most valuable areas where I've done a lot of projects. And so here are the 10 articles you want to create for your portfolio. There are several different ways you can create your portfolio going down the line, but however you decide to do it, whether you choose to take 10 jobs that kind of match these topics from your writing mill, whether you decide to write them on your own, however you do it, these are the 10 topics that I recommend having in your portfolio to show that you can do a wide range of work. Now, maybe you're a specialist in a certain area. Maybe you are a massage therapist or a hairstylist, or you have an engineering degree, whatever your area of specialty is, you may decide you just want to write articles about that area and be a specialist. And that's okay too. When you're a specialist, your portfolio should have 10 articles that are similar to that topic. And then you actually can get paid more because of your expertise. So that's another approach. But right now we're kind of being a generalist. So this is the basic approach for a brand new person who wants to make thousand dollars this month. And here's the 10 article topics that I recommend. Number one is an article on weight loss. This is one of the biggest industries online. And that means there is a constant and never ending need for new articles on this topic. Number two, trouble sleeping, insomnia, baby can't sleep through the night. Anything to do with trouble sleeping is good. It's a little bit medical, but not too much. So it shows that you can bridge the gap uh, between a couple of different spaces. Insomnia is a pretty popular industry anyways, but this shows that you can handle a lot of the spaces in between health and wellness. So you can actually capture a lot of client work that's beyond just can't get to sleep work. It demonstrates a good area of expertise. Number three, survivalism. This is a space where I've done a lot of work in the past. It's a very big money space. It's a growing space. And if you can find a client who wants you to write survivalism articles for them, you can make a very, very, very good living just writing blog posts for a single client. This space is very lucrative. The products and services are very, very expensive. For example, one of the top products in this space is, maybe you don't know, building underground bunkers. I watch some of those prepper TV shows for a real crap underground bunker where it's basically just made out of a shipping container where they make the container for you, put in the chemical toilets, yada, yada, and the beds and all that. They dig a hole, bury it in a hole in the woods. We talk about a quarter million dollars. A very expensive industry. If people are willing to spend that much for an underground bunker, the people still in that bunker are more than happy to pay you a premium to write really good articles to bring them new customers. Number four, internet, software, or tech. So here we're looking at software technology, anything to do with software or online space. This is where you can write about your opinion on a new codec. This is where you can write about anything to do with this part of technology. You can write about a lot of really great stuff here. If you're interested in more doing some uh, social media type writing, you want to be someone who writes about social media, this is where you would put that article. Instead, you could write about how Facebook just released a live audio version. So now people can live stream audio instead of just live streaming video. That could be what you write about. It's still in the kind of software space, but you have enough leeway here to begin to reveal your voice so that you get the type of clients you want. But this is about providing a spectrum as well. Number five is about hardware technology. This is where you would write about televisions, uh, 3D technology, virtual reality. You could compare several different types of mice. What's the benefit of using a wired mouse versus a wireless mouse? Anything physical where it's a piece of technology you can touch, hardware instead of software. This is a really great topic. There's a lot of work in this space because there's always new technology being released. Number six is dating relationships. Huge industry. This is the very first space where I made a lot of money online. It's where I began to really explode online, began my online businesses. There's always new work in this space. And this covers everything from how to get your first girlfriend, how to act on a first date, all the way through 10 steps to the perfect best man speech, how to know if he's the one, how to know if your partner's cheating, how to get your ex back. These are really, really big spaces. How to know if your partner is cheating and how to get your ex back are massive industries. They're, whatever you're thinking of, they're about 100 times bigger than that financially. So the amount of work in that space is pretty close to unbelievable. There's tons of work in that space. There's always work in that space. That's why magazines survive. How many magazines do you see that put out article after article, month after month about relationships? 
people can never consume enough content. Number seven, health. This is where you could write an article about diabetes, hypertension, or ED. If you don't know what ED stands for, you'll figure it out. It's one of the biggest industries online. It's a big part of health, and it's another place where if you can write good articles, there's tons and tons of work. Number eight, make money online, how to make a living. This is where you can write about search engine optimization, write about running advertisements. You could write about social media for profit. So this is where instead of just writing about social media for tech or for uh, consumers, you're writing for business to business. And there's a lot of work in this space. I read several different blogs in this space because I'm always looking to see where the shifts in social media are. So this is really valuable type of content. And again, you're more focused on an audience. In this case, the audience for this type of article would be people like you, people who are trying to make money online, whether it's businesses or individuals. Number nine is fashion and wearables. Here you could do something like a, a Samsung watch or the iPhone watch, or you could do wedding dresses, anything to do with different areas of fashion. And you just go as far as you can. If you're totally fashion ignorant and you can't write an article about raw fashion, that's okay. Just do something about clothes, whether it's about t-shirts and the Teespring kind of business model, how people are now buying print on demand t-shirts, whether it's about something you can wear, anything you can do that has to do with clothing, fashion, hats. There's got to be something you can write about. Everyone knows about something. And again, these are all articles that you can do research for. These aren't articles that you should already know about. These are articles that you research and write to provide a nice resume. Number 10 is parenting. Parenting is a really, really big space. And some of these articles, right, you can kind of mingle them. So if you're one about trouble sleeping, became about a parent whose children can't sleep through the night, that's okay. We want to have articles that kind of fit across the spectrum. And this gives us a wide spectrum. There's other places, other things you can write about. Now, if you're a specialist or if there's things you really want to write about, like politics or video games, that's fine. You can go in that direction. But this is to give you a resume that's really valuable. So even if you want to be a specialist, I would still recommend having a baseline of 10 things. I can tell you right now that the breadth of my portfolio is really important. When people approach me about projects, I take a lot of ghostwriting projects. They want to see that I've worked on projects that are very similar to theirs. When you show someone an article that's similar to their space, they're 10 times more likely to hire you. So if someone says, hey, I really want you to write an article about jet skiing. And you go, oh, I actually wrote an article last year about motorcycles. They'll go, okay, that's pretty similar. That's good. But if you go, well, here's my article about three tips to be a great babysitter. They'll go, well, you can write and you can spell, but I don't have any idea whether or not you can handle this type of topic. So taking the time to actually have a portfolio, write articles that are similar to what your market, your customers are going to want, it's going to make a huge difference on your bottom line. It's going to massively bump up your income. And that's what you want. While you're building out this portfolio, there are other steps that you can be taking to continue to grow your business. You can think about things and I'll talk about them in our follow-up, which is about going from $1,000 to $5,000 a month with writing. But things you can think about are building up a website or setting up profiles on different places where you can begin to get customers but a lot of those customers are going to come in months two, three, four. But I just want you to start letting those swirl in your mind right now. Once you've written those articles, it's time for step four in our process to create and prepare your portfolio. This is another area where people make really dumb mistakes. You want to be as professional as possible right here. Don't make mistakes when you don't need to. You want to convert all of your articles to PDF. When people send me articles in weird formats, it makes me crazy. When people send me a demo article in like a .txt or a .rtf file, yes, my computer can open them, but those files are heavily open to interpretation, which means they'll look different on my computer than they do on yours. And the font is always weird in those types of files. So you end up sending a customer that's unpleasing to the eye, and there's no reason for that. The reason I say to use a PDF is that a PDF is a universal format your document looks like a picture. That means that the way it looks to you is how it will look to everyone else. That's the whole reason people use that format. It's a non-editable format. So what they see is really a photograph of what you see. When you send me a Word document, my Word settings will take over and change how it looks. Yes, I have Word. Now, there are people who don't. There are people who don't have Word. I know people who are millionaires who don't use Word. They still use OpenOffice. And I've had to work with people like that in the past. It's a total nightmare, but you have to constantly export and convert to open office, all that stuff. 
Don't leave the door open to a problem on someone else's computer hurting your business. The second step when you're prepping your portfolio is to name your files intelligently. Do not name your files Article 1, Article 2, Article 3. Instead, I would name them based on the topic and your name. So it would say, weight loss article, Jonathan Green. Weight loss article by Jonathan Green is what I would title the first file. The second one would be titled sleeping article or insomnia article, Jonathan Green. I want to name the files with the topic and my name. This allows someone who opens up my portfolio to choose which of the 10 articles they want to read. This is very, very critical. If you send someone a package with all 10 articles, and I'll talk you through how to do that in a moment, they're not going to read all 10. They're going to look at them and go, okay, this is the two or three that are closest to what I'm looking for. I know this because this is how I get hired and this is how I hire writers. I hire ghost writers all the time to work for me. Whenever I get a project or I overextend or I need help taking something across the finish line, these are the steps that I take. Once you've converted your 10 articles to .pdfs and once you've named them correctly, they should have your name on them and the articles as well. So in the actual article document, you can have the title of the article and you have your name on it. You have your name in the footer. The more you do those little steps to make you look professional, that will separate you from people who seem like English is their third language and will never kind of break past tier one. And if you're stuck in tier one and English is your second language, this is part of why these little steps here will make a difference. You want to merge the files into a zip file. So this is where you take 10 files and you convert them into one single file that people can download. This way you can, someone can say, hey, let me see your portfolio. And you can send them one file instead of saying, here's, here's a link to 10 things. Now there are other places where you'll put your portfolio and the 10 will be separated, but you right now need to prepare this single file. And I recommend you put it online so that you can turn it into a link. So anyone who asks for your portfolio, you can copy and paste a link to them. The value of this is that even if you're on your phone or you meet someone in person, you can give them the link really easily, as opposed to saying, I'll email it to you when I get home. You don't have to be online for someone to get your portfolio anymore. So you can simply use Dropbox, which is a free service. One of the easiest ways to do it. Dropbox allows you to sync files between your computers, but also allows you to create public links for stuff. So you can upload your file to Dropbox, save that link, and just give it to people all the time. You can even shorten it with like a bit.ly link or something. There's a lot of ways to make it easy to send to people. And that way, anytime someone wants to see your portfolio, you just send it to them and it no longer becomes an active process. It becomes a passive process. And that's what we want. The easier it is for you to send someone your portfolio, the more money you will make. Now, yes, we are a little bit preparing for the future here. We're preparing for as we go up higher levels and make more money, but we're putting together infrastructure that will ensure you can make $1,000 or more month after month. These little steps will help you to get higher paying jobs. So instead of getting paid $8 to write, you'll get paid $35 or $70 to write the same amount of content, I'm trying to raise your rates and turn you into a, more of a premium writer. The fifth step now, after you've prepped your portfolio, is to begin working for writing mills. Now you can uh, work for these different mills and try to find 10 writing jobs that match what you're looking to do with this portfolio. And that way you write these 10 articles and you get paid to make your portfolio. That's totally fine. It's worth doing however you can do it. If you can get paid to do work you're gonna use twice, I have no problem with that, that's smart. But you can't always get all 10 categories. So sometimes maybe you'll get paid for five and five you gotta do on your own. But you can also later on sell those five when someone wants them. Make sure that you really fill out all the information for your profile on these writing emails. A lot of people, they just become a username. They don't fill out their resume, they don't fill out their profile, they don't fill out their content, they don't fill out their special skills. Do all, everything. I want you to add in every little element, add in all your pieces of education, add in any awards you want, anywhere they give you space to write in things you're a specialist on, add it to your profile and resume. You want to add these things and beef up how you look to raise your rates. Now, at the bottom level, a lot of these content mills will, they just pay you based on their opinion and they ignore all that stuff. But some of them, when you write a good article, then look at your profile and go, wow, this person has a college degree, move them up to the next tier, pay them more money from now on. So you want to put those things in place now to make you more money. Take all of the tests. Some of them make you take English tests. Some of them make you take edit tests. Some of these sites also, you can do all the same thing, but just as an editor or just as a reviewer, there's other jobs there besides just pure writer. So take a look at all of those things and find what you're really good at. Find what you can write about quickly. If it takes you two hours to write a thousand words about weddings, or you can write a thousand words about technology in 30 minutes, do the technology work. 
You want to find work that you can also do quickly. Make sure that you take all the tests for each different content mill. Find out what type of stuff you need to submit. Send in copies of all of your degrees. If you have to send in a photograph of your diploma or a photograph of your graduation certificates or anything else, do that. Sending in that material, sending in that content will again raise what they pay you. It takes a few minutes to do it. Maybe you have to pull your a diploma off the wall. In fact, I'll tell you right now, this happened to me. Two days ago, I was thinking about my master's degree. And I wanted to put a picture of it on the website to show people on Serve No Master. And I couldn't find it. I'm thinking that it's on my desktop computer, not my laptop. So I got to look on there next. But it's useful to have digital versions of these no matter what. It turned out I don't really need to do it. I might do it down the line, but I don't, it's not like an emergency. But in the past, I have had to send them in. So I know it's digital somewhere because I've had to email it in the past. But these are things to quickly take care of. If you got to take your thing off the wall and take it down to like Kinko's and get them to scan it for you, do that. Getting it done once is very valuable because down the line, each time you try and raise your rates, you'll have to resend in the same pictures. So it's worth doing now. Submit all the proof. And I want you to take as many jobs as you can do. At first, if you're starting out at the bottom level of these content mills, the jobs are going to be pretty crap. It's the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. They're going to be, the articles aren't going to be fun to write. The pay is not going to be great, but it's going to be okay. As much as people complain about that, the pay is more than most people make per hour. Still pretty decent living. You can still easily make, as you're just learning this stuff, $20 an hour. You can work your way up to it. be at $100 an hour in three months. How many jobs do you have? Where if you start now at $20 an hour, you can beat $100 an hour in a couple months. Not very many. So if you stick to what I'm saying and you do what I'm saying, you'll start to make a lot of money. $1,000 this month is just the beginning. Take all the jobs, generate as much revenue as you can. What you're doing is a couple of things. First of all, you're building up your resume, you're expanding your portfolio. Number two, you're making money, which is great. Number three, you're demonstrating your expertise, putting out content, which will cause them to raise your profile. Once you've written a certain number of articles, they all have different systems. Each of these different content mills have different rules. That's why I can't give you universal rules for all of them for how they raise your rating. But the more content you write quickly, the faster you can go up and the faster they pay you more per article. And that's what you want. You want to get to the highest tier. I want you to be out of their five pay grades and the top pay grade as quickly as possible. Now, while you're doing that, I mentioned earlier about preparing yourself to make more money, more money per month. So what we want to do in step six is all about future proofing. Now, if you only want to make $1,000 per month and you don't want to make more money per month, you can skip this step. This step is only if you want to make three or $5,000 per month working the same amount of time. If you're happy to work three hours a day and make $1,000 per month, and you have no desire to work three hours a day and make $5,000 a month, then you can skip this part. This is only for people that want to make a lot of money. But I want to put this in place now to future-proof you and prepare you if you do want to be wealthy. What you need to do is begin to capture real estate. So there are a couple of places where you can post ads saying that you're a writer and people will pay you more. So let's say you're writing for content mill, okay? And the content mill is paying you eight cents a word. They are probably charging the client 15 cents a word. So just by removing the middleman, which is easier than you think, you can go and double your income. You can double what you get paid for the exact same work. So this is how for the same work, you would jump from $1,000 to $2,000 a month just by removing the content mill from there are a couple of really good places where you can establish real estate. Warrior Forum is one, Fiverr is another one, Upwork, and then Guru. These are four places where you can create profiles, show what you do, and begin to build your online presence. When you're in these four places, you can then offer people your resume as they want it. You can take in work and start to do projects directly for clients. Now, this is just about month one. In a follow-up lesson about breaking to 1K a month, I'm going to cover exactly how you can use these pieces of real estate and grow your profile and start to bring in lots and lots of business. But for now, it's just enough to take a look at them and begin to write your profiles. Now, if you're wondering how do I write a great profile on one of these sites, look for someone who's getting a lot of work, copy what they're doing, and just make it about you. So if you're on Warrior Forum, look for someone who's doing article writing and they have lots and lots of messages and read their whole sales page and then replicate it. That's all you need to do for now. You'll bring in some work that way. But that's really putting these things in place now will allow you to make more money in month two. 
Your seventh step is with these pieces of real estate to do some discount work. Now, the reason we want to do the discount work is to generate reviews. What we want are reviews, testimonials, and people saying you do a great job. As much as you can have a great portfolio, and some people will read that portfolio and go, wow, this guy's got a great portfolio. There are a lot of people that would rather just read other people who've read your portfolio. So rather than wanting to read the 10 articles you've written, they'll just read someone else who said, yeah, these 10 articles are great, and then they'll hire you. So to get these reviews, we start by doing discount work. And when you take a discount project, let's say someone hires you through Warrior Forum. That's the easiest place to get discount work. So you say, normally I charge $35 an article, but I'm willing to do $10 an article right now for the first five people who place orders. That's all you have to do, and you'll get a ton of work. That plus your portfolio will get you your first client. Say, hey, I'm going to do half price as long as you're writing an honest testimonial. And the great thing about uh, this platform is that they'll write the testimonial as a review of your work, as their own uh, post, because it's a forum. So there's no chance of loss of integrity. So those reviews hold a lot of weight. You can take screenshots of those reviews. You can use them other places. You can copy and paste them. You can edit them. There's a lot you can do. Those testimonials are worth their weight in gold. And in fact, if you have to, I would take work for free to get testimonials. The only problem is that when you do free work for someone, the testimonial they write will be pretty garbage. You'll actually get better testimonials by charging people. When you take a job from someone on Warrior Form and they need to pay you, you then have them pay you through Fiverr or Upwork on one of those two platforms. What this does is generate your first couple of customers. So now instead of it saying a big zero, Jonathan has never done any work on here. He's never had a client. He has no reviews. Now you can get those for five or 10 people. You have five or 10 five-star reviews, five or 10 payments that have gone through five or 10 satisfied customers. All that stuff is really good. Now, the good thing about Fiverr and Upwork as well is that they put the money in escrow, which means the person pays the website when they hire you. You only receive the money when the person is satisfied with the finished product. Yes, both of these websites take a cut. Can't remember the exact percentage because it's always changing. It's between like 5 and 15%, I think, right now. But it changes all the time. So there's an, I can't give you an exact number. The best thing is just check them. Now you're saying, oh, I don't want these places to take a cut. But no, those places will generate a lot more work for you. And so what you're doing is, again, we're losing a little bit of money to get those reviews in other places. So now you have a review on Warrior Forum, which you can use anywhere you want, on your website or anything. And you have these great reviews that you can use on these other platforms to get work on those platforms. So by taking these extra jobs, we're beginning to move away from the need for the tier one content mills. So we're a little bit looking at month one and a little bit into month two here. I want to give you a little preparation for moving forward. Now you can sit down and decide, hey, I don't want to make additional money. I don't want to break past $1,000. $1,000 a month is more than enough for me. In which case, you don't have to worry about the websites. You don't have to worry about getting reviews. But if you want to accelerate past a thousand dollars per month. These are the steps to do it. Once you get about five or ten reviews, ten is really better, but five, if that's all you can get, you can then raise your rates. You can then no longer do the discounted work. Now remember, for that review paper, you did half price, you still got paid the same as you are at the content mills. We're beginning to diversify our source of work very quickly. Now we get to the point where you can get your own clients, but if you don't, you can fall back on content mill work to be sure that you have that baseline thousand dollars a month that creates guaranteed or secured income. And that's what we're putting together here. And again, to make this thousand dollars a month, you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to be a total marketing master. You just have to be someone who puts in the time and can speak English. It's not that hard to get the rest of it right. The last thing I'll recommend is that you begin to take action right now. I want you to start taking these steps right now. Your action step, the first thing you should do immediately is download Grammarly. Go to servenomaster.com backslash Grammarly, G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y. There's a link below this audio. I have links all over my website. Grammarly is a free tool that you can use to improve the quality of your writing. What I want you to do when you finish an article before you ever submit it to a customer content mill, put it in Grammarly, fix all the grammatical mistakes it catches. Now, yes, at a certain point, they will offer you the paid upgrade. And I pay the extra, I pay the uh, upgrade price, which is somewhere between $100 and $150 a year, depending on their different promotions and stuff. You don't really need that right now. That's for more advanced stuff. That's if you start to take up book writing projects. I would only invest in Grammarly and to fix the advanced errors once you're at the point where you've made enough money from your ghostwriting that it pays for Grammarly. So I wouldn't invest in it until you're making money from it. The free version is fine for right now. That's your first action step. Your second action step is to join those three writing mills. The link below will show you exactly where to do it. 
And then your third action step is to begin working on your portfolio, those 10 articles. And number four is to begin really dialing in and making your profile, your resume inside of those content mills as good as possible. Submit all the content you need to, do all the tests, do whatever you got to do to maximize your rates. All of those little steps will get you to $1,000 this month. Those are the action steps you can take. Seven simple steps to make $1,000 in the next 30 days. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Serve No Master podcast. To find out how you can get a free copy of my new book, head over to servenomaster.com backslash podcasts right now.